1946, Charles W. Gilmore described a skull from a potentially new dinosaur. He believed it to be another species of Gorgosaurus, so he named the beast Gorgosaurus lancensis. This was made to be the type specimen of the species, and it appeared to be a juvenile Gorgosaurus. Later in 1988, Robert T. Backer, Philip Curry, and Micah Williams noticed that the skull of this creature had all of its bones fused, which made the animal appear to be an adult. With this observation being made, they renamed the dinosaur to be Nanotyrannus. After that, controversy ensued. In 1999, Thomas Carr wrote a paper that made a very brave statement that Nanotyrannus is a juvenile synonym of Tyrannosaurus rex. This paper got many supporters over time. Noteworthy paleontologists such as Jack Horner and Thomas R. Holtz agree with this statement, and most of the paleontological community has caught on to it as well. This paper also helped people to start questioning the validity of various dinosaur genera. Various species of pachycephalosaurids and ceratopsians are also debated as to whether or not their respective species are valid, or rather younger versions of other animals. However, some people still question whether or not Nanotyrannus was valid all along. While not a popular opinion, the people who question Nanotyrannus being the same as T-Rex have some good points. Before we get into why people don't think that Nanotyrannus is a teen T-Rex, let's dive into what Thomas Carr's paper covers. Carr's paper talked about the growth of many Tyrannosaurs, including Albertosaurus, Gorgosaurus, Displetosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and obviously Tyrannosaurus. He stated that they all have similar growth patterns. He separated them into three different growth stages, except for Tyrannosaurus and Displetosaurus, since those two species show the most growth out of all of the Tyrannosaurs. The first stage has the most immature bone grain out of them all, and the rest show further developed versions from the last. The paper's reasoning is actually quite sound. Young T. rexes had never been found. The Nanotyrannus specimen the paper covers, CMMH7541, mainly known as the Cleveland skull, showed immature bone grain and other juvenile traits, like a long and low snout, for example. The skull also displayed many similar traits to grown T. rex specimens. However, Nanotyrannus still has many qualities to prove that it is its own genus, and separate from Tyrannosaurus. In 2003, Philip Curry released a paper discussing Tyrannosaurid anatomy and ontogeny. In this paper, he pointed out that some of the traits in Carr's paper used to show that these species are the same are actually seen all across Tyrannosauridae. Way later, Pete Larson wrote yet another paper concerning the subject in 2013 titled simply, The Case for Nanotyrannus. Between when Larson's paper was written and Carr's was, a whole new nanospecimen was discovered, the infamous Jane. This paper covered in-depth as to why Nanotyrannus is a valid genus. One of the most used arguments this paper goes over is the tooth difference between Nanotyrannus and T-Rex. Nanotyrannus has a tooth count of about 15 to 16 in the maxilla and 17 in the dentary, while Tyrannosaurus has 12 to 13 tooth sockets in the maxilla and between 12 and 15 in the dentary. Both of these Tyrannosaurus have four tooth sockets in their pre-maxillae. Thomas Carr argued in his paper that this difference in tooth count could simply deal with growth. The Tyrannosaurus lost teeth as they grew over time. He also stated that this subject is difficult to deal with, mainly due to how individual species of Tyrannosaur, like Albertosaurus for example, differ tooth count with each singular dinosaur. One Albertosaurus may have 15 teeth in the maxilla, while another could have 13. Pete Larson in his paper held this under scrutiny and made some very good critiques. He cited Charles Craig Mook in that he said that crocodilian teeth would simply get shifted around during growth. The tooth sockets would just not disappear. He combined many archosaur types tooth counts, including various theropod dinosaurs outside of Tyrannosauridae, as well as crocodilians. The standard deviation found from combining T. rex and Nanotyrannus' teeth was one half larger than all other Tyrannosaurs. The total standard deviation, including the other archosaurs and dinosaurs, was 2.5, which is larger than normal. While looking at species of Crocodilus, the standard deviation was 1.5. This points to the change in tooth count between Nanotyrannus and T-Rex as being unnatural, and that this difference does not deal with individual variation. The difference in tooth sockets between Nanotyrannus and T-Rex is definitely one of the most prevalent points used to prove the validity of this genus. This paper still has many other ways of showing that Nanotyrannus was its own thing. Another important way of classifying this animal is looking at its sutures, the connections between the bones. The way these bones are fused generally tell the stage of growth the animal is at. Many of Nanotyrannus' vertebrae are completely fused, while even other mature Tyrannosaurs have open sutures. If Nanotyrannus were indeed a juvenile rex, it would have to take on 10 times its weight to become the size of a fully grown Tyrannosaurus. With mostly closed sutures, it would be quite problematic to put on that much weight. Not to mention, 
Nana Tyrannus's pelvis is completely fused, yet no adult Tyrannosaurus has been found in this condition. There are also numerous other morphological differences between these two animals that the paper covers. For example, the antorbital fossa, quadrilateral jugal, and lacrimal of these animals are shaped very differently. Nano also has different foramina and fossae found on bones like the postorbital and quadrilateral jugal not found on T-Rex. These differences could be attributed to ontogeny, but Nano's bones can actually be compared to the Albertosaurines. Just a couple of these shared traits are a ridge on the antorbital fenestra and maxillary fenestra that are also seen in Gorgosaurus, and fossae in the postorbital of Nano can also be found with Albertosaurus. To help understand T. rex's ontogeny, we can look at other members of his subgroup, the Tyrannosaurines. In 2011, a stage 1 Tarbosaurus juvenile was found, and guess what? It had the same amount of tooth sockets as its adult form. The juvenile also had similar morphological traits to the adult, like having four amina in the same place, for example. They, however, do have a large difference when it comes to the bone and teeth density. The teeth for baby Tarbosaurus were so thin that they probably had a different dietary niche than their adult counterparts. Overall, though, the juvenile and adult Tarbosaurus share many similarities, unlike with Nanotyrannus and T-Rex. There are other things to be said about Nanotyrannus about discoveries that are not yet made official. For example, there is one specimen called the dueling dinosaurs that has a beautifully preserved Nanotyrannus lying alongside a ceratopsid. Maybe they are fighting, it's not really known, but it's still pretty cool. The thing about this particular specimen is that it has absolutely ginormous arms, larger than those of an adult Tyrannosaurus. It would be odd for a juvenile version of an adult animal to have larger appendages than its grown form. The answer to all of this debate could potentially be found with one specimen found by Robert Detrick, presumed to be a baby T-Rex. The specimen was named Baby Bob. Baby Bob has the same tooth count in the dentary as a mature Tyrannosaurus. The only problem with this specific dinosaur is that there are no officially published papers regarding it. In fact, a lot of these don't have official papers regarding them. So, in the end, those are a lot of points defending the validity of Nanotyrannus. In the end, it would really help if we could publish more papers regarding this creature, and also if we found more of its bones. There is still a decent amount of evidence pointing to its validity. And I just wanted to give a shout out to my good buddy, King Crossbreed. Uh, he actually made some of the art specifically for this episode, so I'm going to give you a link to his social media. Make sure to give him a follow. He makes really good art. So, what do you guys think? Do you think Nanotyrannus was real, or just a tiny rex? If you have anything to say regarding this subject, don't be afraid to sound off in the comments. I'm always trying to learn more. We all need to evolve or we go extinct.